It's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. Even we're live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatry. Andrew, what's going on? Oh, something's great is happening, Peter. I've just had my ice cream from the ice cream van. The ice cream van in full effect. They wouldn't be here in Chicago because it's uh, it's cold. It's definitely awesome. not ice cream weather yet. <laughs> it's been lovely. How Did are you, you Peter? You, I'm I'm good, but more importantly, was it was it vanilla? What's your what's your flavor? What do you what do you go for it, from the ice it cream? It was van? vanilla. It has vanilla with a sprinkle of uh, of peanuts on a and oh, a, a 99 talking. flake cone. So yeah, nice. beautiful. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, it is Humanware Live, and it is Tuesday, May 14th, somehow, I think. Or is it May? No, it is May 13th. Um, but we are here live May the 12th. I guess I have no idea what day it is anymore. We've you all, had a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we've, all hit that, uh, we've all hit that skid, right? We're all not sure what day it is. But it is Tuesday, May 12th. We are glad to be here. Um, we will also be here this Thursday. For anybody and everybody who is listening to this, beginning next week, we will be doing one Humanware Live episode. We are going to have one a week with Andrew and I on Thursdays uh, of each week. And then I am going to be looking at possibly doing some things on Tuesdays. So stay tuned. But uh, next week, we will have one Humanware Live episode. So please be ready for that. And that will be on May 21st. So if you're looking for us next Tuesday, and we'll remind everyone Thursday, but if you're looking for us on Tuesday, you're going to be pretty lonely because we will not <laughs> be here. Um, but for today, we are going to be looking at Microsoft Teams. So some of you may have heard of Teams or you may use Teams in your office setting or maybe even in your school or education setting. Going to look just at how Teams works a little bit, just a brief intro and how you can send messages back and forth. And then we're going to also have a look at Google Drive. So I'm gonna walk us through some steps on how we can move folders around, um, batch deletion, um, how we can you know, create new folders, um, and also how we can move files and various pieces. So we will jump into that a little bit. So it's really, it's gonna be the, the, the Peter in Drive sort of show uh, for the majority of today, but we'll start with Teams. I am going to share my screen. I've got a day off, Peter. Is that right? What's that? Yeah, I've got a day off. That's what you're you saying. You have a day off. You have just put in so much time. I'm uh, I'm running the show. Although I need you for the first part, so you're not you're not <laughs> totally off the hook. We're still uh, we still need your uh, we still need your input here. <laughs> Let me start share, and we're gonna do this. And just whilst you're doing that, just to let you know, I have turned the hand raising off at the moment. Uh, we will put the hand raising back on uh, when it comes to answering uh, Q&As. Uh, yes. In the meantime, if you do have questions, um, I'll be here in the background uh, answering those questions. So you can do that through chat or you can do that for the Q&A section. Andrew's like the behind the scenes screener. Oh, yeah. All right. You should hear my jaws, Andrew. Connect. Yeah, I do. Connect. All right, let's mute. Speech on demand. All right. So what I'm going to do, and we are gonna we are gonna jump in. I'm on the main menu, um, and we're going to look at Teams. Teams is an app that is made by Microsoft. It is from the Play Store. It is simply much like Google Hangout, or those of you in education, you may be using Google Meets, which is about to be opened up to everybody. Um, or you may use something like Microsoft Teams, or it's it's really just a chat sort of client. Um, you can use it within your office and various teams, meaning you can have several people in one group session. Um, you can use it also to send material back and forth, which is what Andrew and I will, will show you of how you can send a file and how you can receive a file from Microsoft Teams and open it up in Keyword um, or, or wherever you may want to open it. So what I'm going to do is I'm on the main menu. I'm going to press letter A and come to all applications. All applications. And I'm going to press enter. 
Main menu all apps. And I'm going to turn my volume Amazon up. shopping. One little piece here. Louder. All right. Now, I am going to press the letter Accessibility T. Accessibility volume set to A. I'm going to press the letter T to move down to Teams. Teams. All right. So once it's downloaded, it will show up as Teams. Remember, the first time with any app, the first time you launch an app, you're always going to have some screens to walk through where it tells you what the app does. You will probably have to log in with your credentials. Um, again, you, you'll have to have a, a Microsoft 365 account or a Microsoft account to get in here, much like... Um, Outlook or, or any sort of apps, right? If you, or, or Google Meets, right? You have to use your Google account. So this is no different than anything else you might use. This app will require a Microsoft account, but I'm going to jump in by pressing enter. Teams launched. Teams is launched. Chat. Recent chats. All right, and we have recent chats here. Now, there are a couple of things going on. Um, the first piece of this is I have at the very top of my screen, so if I press K or 1-3 with enter to move to the very top left corner of my screen. New chat button. I can come in and start a new chat, right? You can come in and, and search for someone or, or if, if there is somebody in your network that you want to chat with, you can do that. If I come down. Navigation button. This would be, again, you go into the menus and navigation and there are various settings and things you can change. What you will also see generally when you launch this app Chat. Is you're going to have your recent apps shown, uh, chats search. shown here. So right underneath search, if you press your next thumb key. Recent chats. Andrew Flutters. Last message of yesterday. Audio message. Right. So Andrew had sent me an audio message yesterday when we were testing this sort of thing out. But you'll see your recent chats appear here. You can, and generally, I don't know how many this will keep. I've, I've only really used this a couple of times within here um, as I've been testing various things. But it will keep your recent chats. You can always activate your chats tab and find more if you need to. At the, across the bottom of the app, you do have five tabs. And remember, if you always, if you want to get into that tabs list to move to the very bottom right corner of your app or the very furthest to the right tab across the bottom, you can press four, six with enter. We're going to see this when we move into drive as well. More tab, five of five, so when I do not that, selected. I jump very quickly to the last tab, which is, says more, and that's five of five. So you would find settings and various things in there. If I press my previous thumb key. Calendar tab, four of five. Not selected. This would be my calendar tab. So if I needed to pull that up, if I had synchronized calendars and such, depending on what this is. Again, this can very, very much change in terms of how well it works. So we're really looking at the chat functionality here. Um, I have not played a ton with the calendar syncing and that sort of piece within this app. So you can play at your own risk. And I'm sure parts of it will work and parts of it might leave you scratching your head, right? Teams tab, three of five, not selected. So this would be your Teams tab. If you have groups, so some of you might use Slack or some of you might use these various services where you are in with team members, this allows you to have a team. So let's say uh, instead of Andrew and I just opening a chat, we might have an actual team where there's a thread of content and things like that that are presented. Again, very specific to if you're working in groups and you need to channel or thread things um, outside of just doing a regular chat. Chat tab, two of five. Here's our chat tab, which is what I currently have selected, which is showing my recent sort of chats. Activity tab, one of five, and then the activity not tab. selected. The activity what? tab is tied into if you're mentioned or if things are trending or if you're tagged in different places. Again, it's very much about how information is being exchanged, where today we are seeing in so many work, especially workplace environments, we're moving beyond email, right? Email is great, but it's not as, as useful as using something like um, Slack or Teams or these other places where we can really see more than just one aspect of a message going back and forth. So that might be something you'd look at. But I want to come into Andrew's chat and just briefly show you how to exchange information between Andrew and myself. Joel's recent chat. All right, so recent chat. Andrew's so Andrew. We saw Joel was down there. Joel might be joining me. Um, to his chagrin or joy, we'll see at some point in the next couple of weeks here on uh, modified sort of episodes of Humanware Live. Joel is a product specialist here at Humanware, so I was chatting with him, uh, but this is Andrew's chat here. So my recent chat, I see Andrew. If I remember, if I needed to, I could go up to the new chat area and actually type in and search for his email address and pull him up. But once I activate this, I'm gonna press enter and it'll pull up his chat. Teams, 
back button. We're going to have a back button. We are now in the place where I can send and, and kind of receive messages or things from Andrew. Now, once you are in a chat, there are a couple of tabs that apply to the chat that you're in, and we'll look at those in a moment. But the simplest thing to do here is if I want to talk to Andrew, right, I can look at the recent history, so what we sent each other yesterday, where I'm just saying, hey, 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 and he's saying, hello, hello, and things like that. But what I can do is I can press the letter T. Type a new message. Edit box. To jump right to that, type a new message, edit box, right? So I'm in a chat. I want to send something to Andrew. I type the letter T. I move to it and I press enter and I will go into or activate that edit box. Type a new message, edit box. And I'm going to type of field. In, we hear it say end of field. My cursor is active. The letter E is visible on screen visually uh, for somebody who is light dependent. If I type in the words, oh, let's just say what. Dot, dot, is good. S G D dots two, three, six. Right? So I type in what is good. Remember, if I press enter, new line. It makes a new line, right? It's not going to send that message. This is a multi line text field. So let's get rid of that new line. New line deleted. So I type in what is good. And to send this, I'm going to press my next thumb key to leave the edit box. Insert image. And I'm or going to press the letter S as in send. Send message button. And I press enter. Type a new message edit box. And that goes what? to Andrew. Now what will happen is when Andrew gets the message, he can respond to me and he can send me a message and I will get it here as well. So when Andrew, and if I look, if I press my previous thumb key above my type a message edit box. Seek control, zero play audio this was message. A message, Andrew F. Andrew sent to me yesterday. Yesterday, 944M. Right, it was an audio message from yesterday. It says Andrew F. Now if I come down. Play audio message, seek control, zero U. Sent today, 1111M. What is good? Right? My ice cream. And then Andrew responded and said, my ice cream. So we see here. Seek control. You. And then was the Sent message from 11. Me, and then here's the message from him. Last read. Andrew F. Today, 11, 12 M. My ice cream. Right. So we get his message in real time. And you heard that chat. Again, it's a little laggy because I am running this through Connect. And I think my internet, I had to reset it a couple of times this morning, has been very, very funky. So I hope I don't sound like I'm underwater um, here in this Zoom meeting because I, I know I was on one earlier and I sounded a little a little groggy and was like, eh, 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 eh. so hopefully I sound better. But as Andrew messages me, we get the notification and it appears in this string. Now, what Andrew can also do is he can send me a file through here. So he might have something he's created in Microsoft Word or in Keyword and he wants to send it to me. So Andrew's going to send me a file and I'm going to show you how we can save it and how we can open it in Keyword. And then I'll also show you how we can send Andrew a file back. So Andrew's going to send me User that is file. currently typing. Says he's typing. Here you go. Here we go. And he presses enter and he sends me a file. Insert image or video. Type a new message. File options button. All right. So the file showed up. You heard the ring. If I use my previous thumb key, I can find the file name. File. Fun day. Docs. So it's called funday.docx. Now that is right up my alley because I always call things fun times or fun day or happy, happy, joy, joy or something like that, right? So Andy is absolutely catching on to my mantras here. And we see the file name and after the message with the file name, we get a, something that says file options button. File options button. So again, this is in relation to that file. If I press enter or a cursor router key on this. Fun day. Docs. Open button. I will get some options here. So I can open this. Now, I don't want to open this because it will try to open in the Microsoft Word app. So I don't even think I have that installed currently. And we really, we don't want to open these files. Otherwise, we're going to have to step out into a whole new world that is a third-party application that we at HumanWare do not have control over in a Braille-first way. So what I want to do is press my next thumb key. Download And activate button. this download button. So I will press enter and this file will download. Teams. File options button. And we're going to get, uh, we, we get a vibration. So as soon as that file downloads, it, it does go into my device. And I'm going to show you where you find it. Because unfortunately, there's no way to change the file path, but we can quickly find this file. 
So what I can do now that it's been downloaded, and we'll come back in here because we're going to send Andrew a file in a little bit. But if I come to my main menu, so I'm just going to press my home button here. File, funds A, docs, main menu. All right. I'm going Contacts, to come into key list. at this point open my file manager because it, we know it's been downloaded. I'm going to find it within the file manager. So I'm going to press the letter F. File manager. I'm going to press key files. Enter here. Key files. Alarms folder. All right. And as we know, when we looked at file management, when we are in the file manager, we press D with space to move to drive selection. Once we press enter on a drive we want, we come down into that particular drive. This is my storage drive. So the alarms folder is the first thing here. If you're not sure where you are, when you enter the file manager, always, always, always press space with D. Drive selection. Come to drive selection. Storage. You will see your drives that are currently here. So I have storage. Bottom. And that's it. Storage. I don't have any SD card or USB drive in my device. If you have an SD card inserted, you will see SD card. If you have a, a USB drive in, you would see it here as well in your list of drives. But I'm going to press enter on storage. Go alarms right. folder. And this would be now where I can kind of find that file. Now, when I download it, that file is hidden. And sometimes we forget where we save files. So I could show you a very long way to get to it, but I just want to quickly find it. I want to search for it. I want to find it in one, just type in a word and find it. So if I press space with the letter F as in find, I will pull up my search dialog. Search for files or folders. Press enter for all items. All right, and we get search for files Edit or box. folders. Press enter search. for all items. So I don't, want, field. I don't want all items. I want to search for the name of this file. So I'm just going to type in F -U -A. A. D. I'm going to press enter. Day. Key files. Results list. One item. Slash storage slash emulated slash zero slash Android slash data slash com dot Microsoft dot team slash files slash download slash fun day. All right. Now, Docs. If that didn't sound like a crazy file path, I'd love to see one. I'm sure that you can get a little crazier than that. But basically what that tells me is this file is saved in the Android. It's in data. It's in com.microsoft.teams, then files, then downloads, then the name of the, the file. So again, to find it would be a long journey. This way you can find it straight away. We can press enter and we can just open this in keyword and then we're gonna save it where we want it. Maybe we wanna put it in the science folder um, or the literature folder, which again, we've talked about folder management in previous episodes. So I'm going to press enter on the file Go to parent folder. Open with keyword. All right, we get open. Use with a keyword. different app. That is absolutely what we want to do. We don't want to open it with a different app, so I'm just going to find the just once button. Always here. just once and button. Edit box. Hello. All right. So, hello, Peter. How was your birthday Saturday? Yes, it was my birthday Saturday, and uh, it was great. I had a good old time. I had uh, White Castle sliders. Hey, yo, represent. Uh, for everybody who likes some good old White Castle. But what we can do here is now that we've, again, he, Andrew has sent us this file, we find it, we open it, and we can save it where we want to. So we want to get it out of this whole Android.teams, all those weird sort of buried in the file system structure. So what we're going to do to move it where we want is we're going to activate the save as command. So we want to save it as right or save it as a as a different location or a different file name or whatever we want to do with it if we just press space with us we're just saving it where it currently is but we want to save it somewhere else so when i press backspace with s enter file name edit box fun day it puts me into the save, save as. as dialog and i'm in the edit box for the file name file name is fine we can keep it at fun day but if i want to change the location i can press my previous thumb key current location slash storage slash emulated remember this is the path this is where it's currently saved where it's in all those different folders and buried way deep in the device but if i press my previous thumb key again location button i get to the location button and i will press enter key files all right select a file now, to overwrite at this point it puts me into key files and i can choose the proper folder and we've done this before so i'm going to press space with d to come up to drive selection just in case i don't know where i am Drive selection. Storage. I'm going to activate storage. So alarms folder. And I'm going to come down to my science folder that I had created before. 
Science folder. Let's press enter to open up the folder we want to save this into. Go to parent folder. And now, once we've opened the proper location, there is a select button here. So if I press the letter S. Select this folder. I will find select this folder, and I'm going to press enter. Enter file name edit right, box. And that just updated the location. So it puts me back in the file name edit box. But if I look at that path, if I press my previous thumb key, you will see and you will hear that the path is current location slash storage slash emulated slash zero slash science. Science, right? So we have now changed this location. Now, if I want to, I can always change the file name. Maybe it's something I need to edit. So I might want to change the name to Peter fun day or something like that so i know that i'm actually sending my teacher the ones with the answers in it so i could do that in the edit box here fun day edit box right enter file name the file name edit box if i wanted to or i can just activate the save button save button and now it's been moved edit box end of document so again what we see is we can receive a file from teams um, we activate the file options button that is located right after the file name within that Teams app when somebody sends you a file. And at that point, you're able to come down and choose the download option, and it will then be buried way deep in your file system. But the quick way to find it is to open the file manager, type a space with F as in find, and type in the file name and you will be brought right to it. So then you can open it and save it as, do the save as command, backspace with us, and save it where you want to. So it becomes very useful, and now it's, it's a here, right? So it didn't have to be emailed or whatever, it just was done right through Teams. Now, what if I want to send a file back to Mr. Andrew? So I am going to come back into Teams. Recent apps. Okay, I'm Overview. pressing my square button. Remember, space with dots two, three, five, opens your recent apps list. Going to press the letter T. Teams. Going to press Enter. Type a new message edit box. All right, teams. so we are back where we, we want to be. Button. Um, we're in our chat with Andrew. If we wanted to type a new message, I could press the letter T. If I wanted to, you know, see that file, I could do that too. There is also a files tab here where you can see a list of all the files you've been sent. Um, but what I want to do is I actually want to send a file to Andrew. So if I press the letter I. Insert image or video. We could button. insert a video into the chat if I do it again. Insert Jiffy button. We're not going to worry about Jiffy's right now. Let's press I again. Insert file button. We will find an insert file button. So meaning I can insert a file into this chat and send it right to Andrew. So if I press enter on insert file, I will open the Android sort of system, my Braille note system, where I can then find a file. And this is really what we saw when we attached an assignment to Google Classroom. It was very similar in what it opens when we, when we try to attach or insert a file here. So if I press enter on insert file. Type a new message, science. Show roots. What it does Button. is it brings you up. You heard it say type a new message. It, it, the focus kind of shifted. But it brings you into an area where you can choose the folder where your file is located. And you can activate the show roots button to move up one level in your file structure or in your file system. So remember, we are not in key files at this point. We are not in key files. We're actually in the Android file structure. And this is just what the app has to use because we are using a third party app. We're not using keyword. We're not using, you know, key mail. We can't just jump into key files. We have to use what Microsoft Teams wants to use here, and that is the native sort of file structure. So if I press enter on show roots, menu, I will bring up the various folders and files on my device. Open from images. So we see if I press my next thumb key, I can open something from images, videos, I have videos, here, audio, audio, recent, recent downloads, downloads, and so on. But if I press my next thumb key, Braille no touch plus, I will get 39.24 gigabytes free. Braille note touch plus, and that's what I want to press enter on to find a file within my Braille note. If you don't see Braille note touch plus in your list of options here, just like when we did this in Google Classroom, you may have to open your context menu and activate the option that says show internal storage that may be necessary. Mine is it's not necessary for me to do that because I see Braille note touch plus in this list. If I did not, I could open the context menu and I would activate show internal storage and then I would see it in this list. Remember context menu, we press space with the letter M as in menu. So again, I'm gonna press enter here on Braille Note Touch Plus. 
Braille no touch plus. We're going to see all of my different folders and applications here. Let's come into science. Science. So I just pressed S. I come to science. I press enter. Science. Fun day. Here's our fun day dot docs. Docs. Right? Seven which point. Is in science because I just put it there. But let's send Andrew a different file. Practice file let's dot docs. Let's send Andrew the practice file. So I press enter on the file I want to send. So here's the practice file. Notification. Uploading one teams. So it uploads the file. Type a new file. message. Edit box. And file upload completed. It uploads that and sends it over. So again, it's going to upload. If I press my previous thumb key, you will get the file upload complete. File option. options button. File. Fun day. You see Andrew's file, file here? options. Type a new my message. File has been Edit uploaded. box. And if I come to the send, send button, message button, and press enter. Type a new message. My file is now Edit going box. To Peter sent you a file. Message sent successfully. And we get the notification that the message was sent successfully. So I have to upload the file through the process of using the insert file button within the chat. Find my file through the Android kind of file structure. Press enter on it. It uploads and then hit send. And Andrew can then open that file up just like I did, right? So we can... Got it. Thanks. And now we got it. He responded. So we can... Again, send and receive messages and files through the Microsoft Teams app. I like how the message comes in before the ding. It's like uh, the ding just decides to be a little bit delayed uh, on my end, which is awesome. So again, the app can be very, very useful. Um, this is a very brief sort of intro to Teams, but I know it's been used uh, in certain places within education. So just know that it is a possible option if you are using Microsoft or you're living in that 365 sort of environment. Um, I know we, we use this here at HumanWare um, and we use, you know, I've seen it used in, in school districts as well, especially in certain states where they're more leaning more toward Microsoft than the Google side. With that being said though, we are going to look at the Google side of things. So I'm gonna come back to my main menu. Main menu, contacts, All right. At list. this point of the program, we're going to jump in and look at Google Drive. And we're doing very good on time. We've got about 23 minutes and 37 seconds, uh, or maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna take some time to look at Google Drive. And when we look at Drive, please, it, it's very important to keep in mind that what we see, the same thing with Teams or when we look at Classroom or any of these third-party apps, they could very easily Pieces of them can change without notice, and that can be a great thing, and it can also be something that gives us a little bit of, of a headache when, when buttons change or icons change or the layout changes, but we have to be open to it. It's just the reality of third-party apps. So when you open Drive a month from now or a year from now or uh, maybe you opened it six months ago and it was very different from what I'm showing you today, that is absolutely a reality of, of what we see when we look at third-party apps. I'm going to press the letter A and come to all applications. All applications. I am going to press enter. Main menu all apps. All right. And I am going to press the letter D to move down to drive. Device Paul Dictionary Docs Docs Work Drive. All right, so I have some other things here. I press my next thumb key or the letter D a bunch of times until I get down to Drive, and I'm going to press Enter, and this will load Google Drive. Drive. All right. Sort by name. Now, this is my personal Google Drive, and the reason why I show this one is there's lots of folders and files, and also a lot of nonsense that I need to kind of clean up. So I, I do have a lot of untitled documents here. There are, there's something we're gonna delete called June Nonsense. Um, we're gonna get rid of that, but there's also some other folders and files. You will also see my personal Gmail here, and I always say, please, 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 please do not email me here. I have a humanware email address. If you do send me something here, I most likely will not respond. Um, don't take any offense to that. That's, this is my personal Gmail, but there's no such thing as a humanware drive account here because we don't have G Suite. So I, I'm showing you this on my personal uh, Google Drive. Once I load this app, it's, it is very, very usable if you know where you're going. It's really cool. It's very easy to use. It's changed a lot over the past couple of years and it's very accessible and, and very usable also. So what I can do is there are tabs across the bottom, just like we saw in Microsoft Teams. So if I press four, six with enter, I can look at those tabs and I'm gonna do that. So four, six with enter to jump to the very bottom right corner of this app. 
files. And we hear files. So the, the very bottom right tab is called files. If I press my previous thumb key. Shared. We have shared, right? So if something has been shared with me, or I press my previous thumb key again. Starred. Starred. This would be if things were marked and so on. And then we have home. Home. Right? The easiest way to use this that I find when I'm teaching and working with, with students or with users who are trying to use this in the classroom and so on is to work within the files tab to work within the files tab. So we want to activate files. So again, you can press the letter F or you can use four six with enter Bottom. to find files. files and you press enter or a cursor router key and you will select the files tab. On your braille display, you receive the note, you don't get it spoken, but on your braille display, you will have a checkbox. It feels like a uh, two, four, five, six, and then a full cell, and then a one, two, three, five, indicating that this is the tab in, and it is indeed selected. So you will get the files tab selected. And now at this point, you can look at your files and folders within Drive. The way that this works, and it can be a little bit confusing, is your folders are always listed first here, and then your files. So if I come to the very top. Top. Search in Drive. I will have a search in Drive edit box, right? So I can search for, let's say there is, uh, again, here I have a literature folder that we might want to open. I will show you how easy it is just to find that folder without having to move down through the list. So again, if I want to search for a folder or a file, I press L with space to come up to the very top. top. I get my search, search and drive. drive. I press enter. Search and drive edit box. And I can type in the name of a file or folder here. Let's type in literature. L-I-T-A-T-U-R-E. Right, so I type in literature. I press enter. Literature. And then it will perform the search. And if I press my next thumb key. Clear search. Here's our clear search button. Literature folder, modified May 24, 2016. So I created this folder on May 24th, 2016. Here it is. And if I press enter, I will open this literature folder. So let's, let's open it because we're actually going to delete a file from it. So again, very easy to find a file or find a folder without having to swim through that huge list uh, that you might have in Drive um, that you may need to organize, which hopefully today will help you with. But if I press enter, I open the folder up. And using the touch as a braille display dash REV03. Now I put a full uh, file in here, which is using the touch as a braille display. And I, I put it in here because it really doesn't make sense and I want to get rid of it. And I'll show you how to move a file in a moment. But if you want to quickly delete a file, so again, I'm in my literature folder. If I want to delete a file, after each file name, you have something called the More Actions button, which will look like three dots to those of you who are light dependent. So if you're sighted, um, if you're looking at the screen, the three dots are going to be More Actions to us as Braille readers or as screen you know, reader users using Keysoft or using Android accessibility, you're going to get more actions for and using the touch as a braille display dash rev03 dot dot. Right, more actions for and then the name of the file. So if I press enter on more actions for. Share, share. I can share this, which I'm not going to do. And I can move down my list with lots of, with, you know, with my next thumb key. You can use first letter navigation, but it will be limited to what is currently on screen. And the reason for that is, so if I, I want to remove this file, the option is called remove, but if I press R, rename, we get rename. If I press R again, bottom, wah, 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 right? It's, it's not in focus. So I need to actually come to the bottom of this list. And the reason why we limit you to what is first letter navigation works for what is on screen is because if you are in something like Facebook and there might be 200 R's, we don't want to have to have you go through every single one um, before you get back around to the top. So if I want to find rename in this list, I'm sorry, remove in this list, I would press space with four, five, six. I'm going to come all the way to the bottom here. Bottom. Report abuse. So here's report abuse. I'm not going to do that because this is my own file. I'm going to press my previous thumb key. Remove. And here's remove. Again, or because I'm at the bottom, now I could press R and move between remove and report abuse and so on. But once I find remove, so I moved four, five, six with space to the bottom of the more actions menu for my file, I press enter. Drive. Back. And it button. will delete that file. It removes it. Literature. More options. No items. There's no items here right now. You also heard it say more options, and that would be something, again, to those who are light dependent, 
those of you who are sighted, you will see three lines and that has to do with the actual folder. Those actions are related to the folder. So you, more options is different from more actions and we did not build it. So I apologize if that is a little bit confusing, but that is the way that it is labeled within Google Drive. Now we see I have no items here. So again, I'm in literature, I have no items here. At any point in Drive, right, if I wanna know where I am, generally, unless I'm at the very top, unless I'm in my Drive, if I press the letter B, I jump to the back button. Back button. And right underneath the back button, I will have the name of my current location. Literature. So if I press my next thumb key, I hear literature. I think, okay, I know I'm in the literature folder. Now, if I wanna move out of here, I can either press enter on my back button um, or I can use, use my triangle. Well, let's press enter on back. Back button. So pressing enter and I'm moving back. Now again, if I look below my back button here, so I'm pressing B. Back button. I press my next thumb key. Literature, edit box, in that search, search and drive. Remember how we got there via the search field? So I only moved back one screen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back again. Back button, my drive. Enter, and now we're in my drive. So once we're in my drive, this is where I'm gonna show you how to move a file because this can be, again, this is completely separate from key files. This is specific to Google Drive. So I'm gonna find a file and I'm gonna do it manually. I'm gonna look through the list because I don't wanna actually use the search feature. We saw how that works. Search and drive, more navigation ops signed in as Peter Tucci. Now this is me, let's come down. Create. But my drive. In my drive, if I use my next thumb key, you're going to see the list of folders that I have present. Computers here. sort by name, view as grid, but app files folder. Okay, this is APK more, files, um, meaning apps and things. More act classroom folder, classroom folder. More action Google Photos folder. folder. More act how to guides folder. How to guides. I'm just using my next thumb key. More act literature folder. My literature. More act random folder. Random. More, more act touch agendas touch folder. Touch agendas and so on, right? You're getting a sense of all the files in your. I think my wedding photos are even in here. If I come down. More act touch how to got more act photos. touch how to but, tips. More act touch workshops. More act copyrights plus print use only folder. Would be my wedding photos uh, that were shared from our photographer a few years ago. But we, I have lots of things here in Drive and you'll see that these are my folders. These are my folders. But as I keep coming down, I will get into my files. More act zoom uploads folder. More actions for so CH7-9 Sadako vocabulary for square.pptx. Now, Microsoft PowerPoint shared modified not 15 2019. Now, a lot of you, anybody who's ever been in a workshop with me knows that you've seen this file. It is a, a vocabulary sort of four square PowerPoint that I received from, from somebody in Michigan. Um, and I use this a lot as an example of how to work with PowerPoints. I think I might've even done it. Uh, I, I might've done it on this, on Humanware Live. But this, you didn't hear it say folder. So we are now in my files list here, right? Now, what I want to do though is I'm going to find a file called June. Mm, no, let's let's do one called a uh, copy of recess. Let's come down. More act copy of recess helps kids learn better in school. All right, this Google. came from a Canvas account I was working with with a student. Now let's say I want to move this folder. Right now it's in my drive. I want to move it into that literature folder. How would I move a file? So again, I would find the more actions button listed right after the file name. More actions for copy of recess helps kids learn better in school button. All right, I'm going to press enter on this more actions. Copy of recess helps kids learn better in school. We'll open. Share. Our, our more actions menu. And we saw share. Remember, when we wanted to delete this, we chose remove. But I want to move this, so I'm going to press the letter M. Make available offline. We don't want to make it available offline. Make a copy. We don't want to make a copy. Bottom. And remember, if I hear end... Right in this list, there are more options. So I'm going to have to come down to the bottom here with four, five, six bottom. space. Report to abuse. Show the second part of this list, or you could. There are page up and page down commands, which I will talk about, to show different parts of your list. But once I'm at the bottom, I can press M, move, and we will find move. So you could come all the way down to the bottom and use your previous thumb key to come up to move. But once we find move, we press Enter. Drive, back, button. and it's going to say, "All right, Peter, where do you want to put this?" So again, after the word back button, I will find the current location that I'm looking at. My drive. Right now I'm looking at my drive. So I'm thinking, okay, do I want, is my folder in my drive or is it in shared with me? Or is it in, where is it located? If you need to move up a level, you can always activate that back button. No two drives will look the same. 
It's all going to depend on how your particular Google Drive is set up. You might have a science folder, a literature folder, a social studies folder, or you might have folders that your teachers have shared with you that are not in my drive, they're in shared with me. And those are shared folders that were you know, not created by you. So again, drive, you, you have to know where things are located. In my case, I wanna put this in that literature folder. So I'm just gonna press the letter L. Literature folder, modified May 24. So here is the folder. I'm going to press enter on it. It opens it up. And then what I can do once it's open is I can come to the very bottom of my screen and I will have a move button. Bottom. Move button. So again, to jump to the bottom here, I pressed 456 with space. I have a move button and I press enter. Drive. My drive. And now I've moved that copy of recess to help kids learn document into my literature folder, which is located on my drive. So you, you can absolutely do that. Now, what if you want to create a folder? So I'm, I'm in my drive and we're going to do two more things. So we're going to create a new folder. We're going to see how we do that. Then we're also going to remove multiple files at one time because I have a lot of untitled documents in this folder that I need to clean up. I have like five of them that I really want to get rid of. And how could I do them instead of having to hit remove on each one of those? How could I do it in one fell swoop? So what I'm going to do is I am going to first show you how to create a new folder. So I'm in my drive or I'm in literature or I'm in science or I'm in shared with me or I'm wherever I want to create a new folder. So totally up to you, but I'm going to press the letter C. Computers. One more time. CH7 dot create. Uh, two more times button. until we get to our create button. So you, you heard it say CH7 because I had that file in focus, but we're looking for the create button right? And now if I press enter, we can create something at the current location that I'm at. So if I'm in my drive, it's going to create it in my drive. If I'm in my literature folder, it's going to create a new folder within my literature folder and so on. But if I press enter on create, create new folder, our first option here. So it says create new. We have folder. If I press my next thumb key, upload. we create a new upload. We looked at how to share files into drive earlier um, via the, the key files menu. Scan. We can create a new scan, which again, just these are some other options that are here that, that might not be very usable for you. Google Docs. We can create a new doc straight away. Google Sheets. Google Sheets straight away again in my drive. Google Slides. You're located. Google Slides. Bottom. And so on. So what we want to create, create a new folder. So I'm going to press enter on folder. Folder. Untitled folder edit box. And we're in the file. Untitled the folder. folder. And right now new. it's called untitled folder. I'm going to call it uh oh let's call it humanware live deleted a u l a n dot double dot e l i v e okay so we are have we have humanware live and i am i've created the, the folder name i can press my next thumb key cancel we have a button. cancel button create and then one more time button. we have a create button if i press enter it's going to create this new folder in my drive drive Create button. So now, if remember, if we want to know where we currently are, if I press the letter B, bottom, and I find that bottom. back button up here, or if I come Create all the way to the button. top, my drive. I see that I'm in my drive. We always want to look for our current location. If you don't have a back button present, you are probably at the very top of your file system within Drive, which is my drive. If I press my next thumb key, computers zoom upload ch7-9 so zoom uploads for more action i have here if i come all the way to the top of this list top search and drive and I search i could find my humanware folder here or how to guides folder mod humanware live folder modified 11:43 m my humanware live folder so again i it, it, part of the problem here that you will find as you play with this and as you learn how to use Drive is knowing what sort of chunk of your screen is in focus. Um, it is not as easy as just using first letter navigation all the time because there are some very long lists here, right? I have four or five years worth of files and folders um, and things present. So if you're noticing that you're only getting the Bs or the Cs in terms of file or folder names, you may need to scroll your list. And to do that, you can use the page down command which is going to be three, four, five with enter. When you're in a list like this, where you have everything alphabetical and you want to move maybe to the L's or the M's, um, you might want to use the page down command like you would on a computer. So three, four, five with enter is page down. The opposite of three, four, five on a braille keyboard is one, two, six. So one, two, six with enter is your page up. All right, last piece of this puzzle. We are going to delete 
multiple files at once. And it is similar to what we do in key files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way to the bottom of my list of files here. Bottom. More actions for Zoom underscore. Right, these are Zoom uploads, but I have a bunch of untitled documents here. So I'm going to press my previous thumb key and show you these. Zoom under so more I've actions for watch Braille There's no Braille touch. No touch snapshot tutorial video I had from a long time ago. More action untitled spreadsheet. Google Sheets right. available and offline. You see here that I have this untitled spreadsheet. More actions untitled I have spreadsheet. Untitled Google spreadsheet. more action untitled document. I have another untitled document. Right, I have a bunch of untitled documents here, which I've clearly just created as tests. And let's get rid of them. So what I can do. When I'm on a file that I want to delete, we saw that I could activate more actions and simply remove it. But if I want to get rid of several files at once, what I can do more is mark untitled them. document, more act untitled doc. So I'm on the first one, and if I press backspace with L, I will select this file. And when I do that, at the top of my screen, top clear selection, I will have a clear button. selection button. And I will also find out how many files are selected. One item. So I see one item is selected here. Move. Now, you'll also see what I can do with those items once, they, once they're all selected. So I can move them. Remove. I can remove them. Select or all. I can select everything, which I don't want to do. So let's come, let's press letter U again and find those untitled files. Undo. Button. One more time. Bottom. Come down here. Bottom. And let Undo. me get rid Button. of. One. Scopier. I touch works. Touch. Touch. Here. Touch. Agendas. Touch. Scopier. I. C. H. C. Bottom. T. O. Unders. Untitled. Untitled document. Untitled doc. Untitled document. Google doc. Untitled doc. Again, I'm just finding them and pressing backspace L on the files that I want to select. Untitled spreadsheet. Google. Okay. I selected that one. Untitled one spreadsheet. Off. Google Sheet right. Untitled. I now have, I should have five files selected. And I did it really fast because I'm just running around and showing that you can select these with backspace plus the letter L. Nope, there is no indicator in Braille to know that this file is selected. Uh, so you're just going to have to pay attention to what you are selecting. But you can see how many files you had selected by coming to the very top of your screen. So if I hit L with space. Top. Clear selection Remember, I have my clear button. selection button. And if I press my next thumb key. Five items. I have five items selected. So if I come down to remove with my move. next thumb key. Remove. Press enter. Five items removed. Boom. Right. We just removed five files from my drive. So again, you can clean them up in batches. This is advanced and this takes a lot of kind of getting comfortable with this third party app. And that isn't saying that it won't change at some point in time and you need to relearn where things are. Um, this is very different from, from where it was a number of years ago. But, uh, but I, I, they've done a very nice job of making this extremely usable and the cloud is fantastic. So you can come in and share files um, with, with others, right, through that share option, just like we saw when we worked with, with Gmail and things like that, when we composed a message, right, you'll have suggestions that pop up and you can quickly put in someone's email and find it and so on which is actually the last thing I wanted to show. So I'm gonna show you how to share a document with a teacher or a folder. In this case, we are going to share, uh, we're going to share that copy of recess. We're gonna share it with Andrew. So I want to open my literature folder. Literature folder, modified May 24. Okay, so I'm gonna press enter and we should see that copy of recess in here. What I'm going to do, once it's open, press letter C. Copy of Recess Helps right. Kids. So I'm in my literature folder. I have this copy of Recess Helps Kids Learn. And this is a great file. It talks about how recess is awesome and you need it to relax. And I, I thought it was cool, so I saved it because I figured I'd use it at some point. So if I press my next thumb key, remember I have my More Actions button. More Actions for Copy of Recess Helps Kids. All right. So if I press Enter here. Copy of Recess Helps Kids Learn Better in School. Share. I will have a share button where I can then put in an email address to share this document with. Now, this, I'm going to share this. I could share it anywhere, but let's say, remember, sometimes I've used those sample humanware accounts. So let's say I want to share it with humanware 10 or something like that. So if I press enter on share. Add people. Share. Manage collaborators. So you can manage your collaborators. Bottom. Add people or group. Add collaborators. And you'll see that you have add people. Add people or, or groups. 
Edit right? box. And there you have an edit box to add people or groups to this document. And this would be really for somebody with a Google Drive account or a Gmail account. Um, and that will let you go. There's currently a flyover going on. So hopefully everyone heard that. That was pretty cool. Uh, but I'm going to press enter on add people. Add people or a group setting box. And at this point, I could type in the name of somebody I want to share this with. So if, let's just type in the word Ray. R-A-Y. And again, if I have suggestions available, they may pop up down at the bottom. Contact of, suggestions, Nick Ray Harris. Right. Remember, Nick. I can press 4-6 with enter once I leave the edit box to find those contact suggestions. Ray, edit box, add collaborators. And if it's somebody I want, I can press enter. We'll just... Bottom. Nick Ray Harris, Nick Ray Harris, Nick at Noy. Uh, actually, this is a very old that account, doesn't exist anymore. But I can press enter, it will add the email address, and I can then add come collaborate to more options, share, top. dismiss button, and I'm going to have confirm, confirm sharing and send to collaborators button, which is actually either at the top and they've moved it to the bottom. So once I have the proper email address in that I'd like to share this file to, I press enter on confirm and send to collaborators, and then I can I've shared this file with with my friend Nick or with whomever I want to put this in for. All right, this has been crazy. This is a lot of information, definitely advanced sort of pieces of the puzzle here. Um, we talk about that more actions menu really comes in handy for moving, for removing, for sharing. Um, you are able to create folders. You are able to navigate up and around your file system. You can search for files within Drive. Um, you know, and, and it really, Drive is simply a place, it's a, it's a storage bin. Drive lets you organize folders, files, anything, music, whatever files you have. It's, it's like an SD card, but it's in the cloud. So you may use it in many different ways, but I just wanted to kind of run through some basics. At this point of the puzzle, we're going to bring in Mr. Andrew back to the, back to the show. Yep. Um, and we're going we're gonna to take some questions um, and, and hopefully, hopefully that was, <laughs> that we were moving kind of fast, but again, it, it will be good to review for everyone after the fact if you need to, to, to learn some of that stuff. Andrew, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, so uh, a couple of questions Fire that came away. on, uh, but just before I, I answer those questions, the, you can now raise your hands. Uh, it's now been enabled, so uh, we should start seeing a there we go. Load of, load of hands, right? Boom. Okay, yeah. so uh, some of the questions uh, was, um, does this all relate to the original Brown Note Touch 2? It's a tough one. I've not tried Teams myself on the, on the original Touch. Have teams, you? yeah. Teams, I think you will have some real lag issues if you're using Teams on the original Brown Note Touch. It, sh it, it in theory, works. Uh, I've used it in the past, but I cannot speak to how well it would work today. That's a, that's a real tough one. I can, I will look into it um, and can kind of follow up on that uh, with how it might work on the original Braille Note Touch. It really will have to do if, with the version of the app and if it is still supported there. So I'm, I'm not certain. Okay. And will you do a webinar using Touch Plus and Canvas platform? You know, I, I would love to do a Touch Plus Canvas. Uh, the problem is I do not have a demo account, so it would definitely breach uh, confidentiality sort of rules. The only Canvas accounts I've looked at are from students. So if somebody out there would like to, to have uh, an, a sample account created that I could use, I'd be happy to do a webinar on it. Uh, the problem with that also, though, is that creating an account is just creating an account. I would need sample classrooms, uh, sample uploaded materials, and so on, because the, the, the issue with learning management systems is you, you have to have realistic looking accounts. And that's why when I do this with Google Drive, it is my own Google Drive. Um, when I do this in Classroom, it is a classroom that I have built. Canvas doesn't give us that capability. I can't just go in and create a school and a Canvas account um, to demonstrate it on something like this. And so I, we, we can certainly find a way. If you'd like to send an email to humanwarelive at humanware.com, um, if you have ideas as to how we can facilitate that. I'd love to work with any TVIs out there um, that, that would like to, to work with me or help kind of get that going. Uh, I'd, I'd love to do it, but we would need some cooperation from the administrative side of a, a Canvas account or from a school to actually make that happen because we do not want to get names and subjects and all sorts of things out there that would, that would give away student information. Awesome. 
Uh, okay, so uh, another question is, um, uh, let's just have a look. How easy is it to edit a file in Google Drive? Easy? How easy? Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very sort of subjective question. Uh, when, when you're in, remember, Google Drive is simply a storage platform. So when you say edit a file, there are many, many types of files you might come across in Google Drive. Um, you might have a Google Docs file, you might have a PowerPoint file, you might have a PDF or an MP3 or a video or um, easy is, is I, I, guess, I guess the question I don't really get, I'm assuming it refers to a Google Doc. Um, when you were in a Google Doc, we can, we can look at that. Um, I think it's what we should be looking at next week, probably <laughs> next Thursday with our one weekly episode um, is looking at Google Docs and, and how we can navigate, move around. Easy is, again, I think the word, the better word is usable uh, versus accessible. And there are definitely some parts that are accessible and not as usable as we might want them to be and some parts that are very usable. So I, 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 I guess it's... Um, it's really going to be up to the user in terms of putting in the, the time and effort to learn the third party app. Um, anything can, can be done to an extent. There's always going to be workarounds. Okay, and uh, there's a question from Mrs. Q, backspace with what? I didn't hear it. I'm assuming that's the backspace with L. Backspace with L stands for long press, long press. When I was selecting those, those files in Drive, when I selected those five documents, every time I pressed backspace with L when on the title of the file, it would select it. The same thing is true in Keymail. The same thing is true in key files. So if you're in Keymail and you want to select three messages, or um, I believe I showed the same thing in the native Gmail app as well, long pressing generally is your select command. Okay, let's answer some hands raised. So, hands raised. Let's do it. You'll have to apologize for my pronunciation on this name. Oh, I love uh, Andrew's pronunciation. <laughs> this is uh, Hale Kifle. Hale Kifle. Hale Kifle. Hale Kifle. On. You just need to unmute yourself. Three. There we go. Two. You're now all right. right. Okay. You're there. You Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm calling from Canada, by the way, for the first time. Excellent. So um, you were training us on uh, Android, uh, all these Teams, Drive, and everything. So unfortunately, I have iPhone. Can we use these applications on iPhone and uh, on our computers too? Yes. Uh, you can certainly. So this, yeah, these. This, this stuff is specific to the Braille Note Touch Plus. Um, you can certainly use Teams or you know, any, any iPhone applications um, like Teams or Google Drive, absolutely. Much of the, the wording might be somewhat different, but the, the procedures overall, I mean, they're very, very similar um, in terms of how one can move around or the way things are labeled um, and just the workflow. The workflow is generally similar, but uh, you know, again, the, the iPhone, you would be doing that with a Braille display. And yes, they're, they're for the most part accessible with voiceover. Okay. Thanks so much. Okay. okay uh, next then we have um, O Fabian. O Fabian, Fabian, Fabian. O Fabian. Just unmute yourself. And remember, if you are muted, there's an unmute button on your, in your Zoom meeting controls. If you're on a PC, you can hit Hi. Alt A. There you go. You are, you are with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. <laughs> are you getting used to the Zoom? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, so my question is, uh, when you were going through the, the files in the drive, mm -hmm. could, uh, could you use first letter navigation to move for them? So you absolutely can. The only piece there is you are limited to what is on screen. So you can use first letter navigation, but in my case, I had a lot of folders, you know, and, and the other piece there is your folders are listed first. So if I wanted to get to a file called, you know, oh, I don't know, uh, training exercise or something, 
and, and I push the letter T, I might not get there because it might be lower on the screen than what is in focus. So you might have to utilize the page down command of three, four, five and enter to show a part of your screen that's further down. Uh, you can certainly use first letter navigation, but I would suggest if you're in drive and you know where you want to go, I would use that search feature and actually search for the file name and you'll get right to it so much faster than trying to use first letter navigation within the various lists. Okay. So thank you, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so next time we have someone on the phone. Uh, the number ends with 704. So you are now live. Yeah, give the first, the first part of the area code. Because sometimes... One nine, uh, 195. 95. Oh. Somebody, there you go. Hi, it's 951, isn't it? Uh, that's you. <laughs> you were no, on. That's me, that's Nancy. Hi, I'm All Nancy. Right. Hi, hi, Peter and, and hi. Andrew. Um, hi. You know, when you said, you transposed the numbers so through me. <laughs> anyway, um, turn me off. So this is exciting. So this means, uh, this Google Drive means that I can actually save space that goes in the cloud. I don't have to, I can use, I don't have to worry, I can use the SD card or I can use this file and have all unlimited amounts of files and folders. Uh, is that true? And then and I can put movies and all kinds of different files on this, correct? Wow, that sounds exciting. Absolutely. So, so you're, you're spot on. So when you're using, um, when you're using Drive, I believe and I could be wrong, and somebody I'm sure can correct me, but I believe the storage is 15 gigs. I, I might be absolutely wrong there. I, they, I thought they upped it. But generally, yes, you can put, there are ways to put as much as you want. I mean, you can pay for more storage from Google, but your default storage is, is a lot. So if you're storing files, folders, I have videos, all sorts of things, um, it, it, it's nice because then you can access them from anywhere, not just your real note. You might be able to access them from your phone. And you also know that if something happens to any unit that you're working with, whether it's your computer or your real note or some, your phone, you know that that material is in the cloud. It's not going anywhere. And that's the beauty of the cloud is that it's, it's, it's safe uh, from, from devices that might get corrupted. Oh, thank you. That's exciting. Thank you. It's great. Thank you, Nancy. Welcome. All right, we'll do a couple more, Andrew. Okay, so we then have Theo. Theo. Are you there, Theo? Theo's coming. Three, two, one. Bum bum. Next time, Theo, we will we will hopefully get you soon all right anybody hey. else we'll do one or two more okay we have oscar hello oscar hey guys what's happening oscar hi oscar uh, I, i'm okay um there are a few questions sorry they're going uh, a bit past the usual time but um the first one is um can you like find um any like guides on how to set up teams because again i'm having many issues with doing this like i click some buttons and i can't skip them because then it's not accessible for example like i enter my email and then let's go to skype then i can't skip it and when i press the button to go to skype it's not even telling me what to do yeah you're those that again because they're third party you're going to have to either look for somebody to give you some help who can who can watch what you're doing i know i set mine up it, it does work you've got to do some problem solving though if there's unlabeled buttons on those login screens uh you know that's something you've you've got to work through i would i would definitely use your email and password and sometimes you need to swipe left or right with two fingers on your actual visual screen to move the page forward. Uh, sometimes that's the issue as well. Because I'm using a PC and the way I have it is like... Um, oh, Mr. PC, let's keep it relevant. Keep it relevant. We're talking about the Touch Plus, right? So if you're, if you're trying to use it somewhere else, you're going to have to look for some guidance from your screen reader or, or look up some, you know, some communities of, of people that can help you. Let's keep it relevant to our Braille products and kind of what we're looking at today. But the Touch, I think it's going to be the same. And um, I think the webinars with uh, Eric, because I asked him and he said that you should um, uh, speak to Andrew because I like his, his webinars and if I want to like, watch them again on the podcast, um, the Victory the Stream Information Channel, 
uh, are they going to be uploaded onto the stream? Yes, we will. We'll make so the ones from last week. We put them up today. This one should be up in the next, uh, the next day or two for sure. Yeah, so give me some time on that one. Yep, I think, uh, Oscar, you, you're probably you're probably relating to Eric's webinars as well. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I need to speak with Eric about that as he has the recordings. Uh, but for all the humanware live sessions that Peter and I have been doing, uh, apart from last week's um, May the seventh, uh, that we had some problem with the audio. That's not yet up, but last week's 5th of May certainly was. Yeah. yeah. Because I was like waiting for like almost like a week and I didn't see it today and I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. I love pe people want them. It's good. They're, com they're always coming. Yeah. Sometimes we, we, uh, we try to get them up as soon as we can. Um, but, you know, we, you know, we have lots of things going on. So we make sure we, we can, that one from May 7th, we did have some issue with the audio, which I'm going to, we're going to see if, who knows, but generally they're they're up there so hopefully we'll get them thrown in but thanks oscar You're welcome. all right one more hand okay we have mike stern mike stern you are hi on. guys can oh. you can you hear me okay yes we can, yes, we can. okay great now i don't i i really want to hold on my speech is talking at me here i don't i want to keep it relevant and i but i just i do have a general question that maybe peter or andrew you guys would know um i i'm now retired i was a computer programmer and i'm i guess i'm a my day jo job is a musician nowadays and um I was wondering if, if there has been any success or anybody knows anything about the touch being used with some of these apps that have to do with music collaborations, where you, you, know, you do a track and somebody else does a track and you guys put something together. Right. Um, I was wondering if there's any info, info on that. So I will say I have not found anything that works, uh, nothing that works very well. A lot of those apps, you know, uh, I'm a musician and I have friends. I've played in bands my whole life. I've done, I'm currently, I have an audio interface and I do this sort of collaborating through the Mac and through different things. I have not found anything though that works super well here. Your best bet might be to work with shared, you know, Google, a Google Drive folder and just, just you're going to, you're going to have to have someone help you mix that stuff down and things though. There's nothing that is accessible and just nothing that's there in terms of audio editing. The iPhone, even there, I mean, there's some things that come close, but unfortunately it's not going to be like using, you know, Reaper or some other things on, on a Mac or some, or different products. So I will keep looking, but um, on the mobile side, unfortunately, nothing, nothing I found to work super well. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thanks Mike. Thanks a lot, Mike. Well, friends, it has been awesome. Uh, I hope this was helpful. We encourage you to send any suggestions for topics to humanwarelive at humanware.com. If you are looking for Thursday's webinar, um, you're going to have to register for it. So please, please, please um, go to humanware.com. And if you click on support, there will be a link for humanware live and you can, you can find the information for the webinar on May 14th, and you will have to register to be entered for our drawing of a Victor Reader stream. So we will be, we'll be giving that away Thursday. Uh, anything on that front, Andrew? Am I missing anything? Um, well, just to, yeah, just to confirm, those that have previously registered, you may have received an email um, that you'll need to register again. Um, fortunately, we, we actually set the wrong times. So uh, if you did register um, the last 48 hours, just double check, just make sure you are, you are registered for Thursday's webinar and making sure that you have registered before uh, Wednesday, that's tomorrow noon, um, as we will uh, obviously be drawing the, the, the stream. And uh, for you we to enter that- all those names. <laughs> you need to be in, in it to win it and you need to be there as well to win it for sure. So we will be looking at the Victor Reader Trek on Thursday. I'm going to be talking about uh, the new virtual exploration feature that's coming, map browsing mode, um, creating routes, doing some of that stuff, and answering questions on the Trek side. We have some new maps and some exciting information there. So we would love to see you. Just please register. Um, you can do that through our website. If you email Humanware Live for registration links, 
we will send them to you. We will not register you though for the webinar. You have to do that through the actual portal um, because it that way you will receive the Zoom information to the email that you enter twice into the registration fields. All right. Okay. All right. Rock Back to and dinner. roll. Take care of you. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Tuesday.